Really? 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 Yeah, really. Okay, uh, well, remember a couple days ago? It was not that long ago, really. I remember it like it was about 48 hours ago when I sat down and made a video about One Piece Film Red. I thought to myself, hey, the movie's coming out in August, you know, it's getting closer, and uh, a lot of artwork has been revealed for the Straw Hat Pirates. We got the name of a new character, Uta, so uh, I think it's about time for me to sit down and make a whole video about it. And I made that video, and I was happy with how it turned out, and I was like, this is great. This is an awesome video, and, uh, you know, whenever there's some new information for Film Red in several weeks, if not months, I guess I'll make another video about that. So the following day, <laughs> which was yesterday, uh, a trailer was released for One Piece Film Red. I had no idea, by the way, that trailer was going to drop yesterday. If I would have known that, I probably would not have made the video the day before. Oh my god. <laughs> You know what? No, it's fine. It's okay. We can work with this, all right? Honestly, I think it does fit, because you could say, all right, that video was about, like, my theories about what the movie could be about, and then the trailer was released the following day, so we'll see how that stacks up, I, I guess. Okay, that's the best way I can put this. Okay, so we got an intro for One Piece Film Red. It's, it's not a long intro. It's only about 45 seconds long, and a lot of that at the end of it is obviously, you know, One Piece Film Red Door. You know, August 6th, you know, and all the extra promotional stuff. Um, but, but we got some, um, some dialogue in the trailer. There's some information about uh, uh, Uta's character, uh, the new character that was introduced and everything like that. Um, I uh, assumed in the video I talked about, like, maybe Uta is going to be the main villain. Even then, I was still kind of, like, on the fence. Like, is she going to be the main villain? I'm not really sure. Sh she is uh, certainly connected to Shanks in some way, and she wants Luffy to stop being a pirate. So I went on this long spiel about how, oh, maybe she has, like, a devil fruit ability that can manipulate others through her singing and, like, brainwashes Luffy so he doesn't want to be king of the pirates anymore because, you know, she wants, you know, Shanks to be king of the pirates. Like, that was the general vibe. All right, well, let's start watching this trailer. And, uh, what is it? Three seconds in. Three seconds in. We have a scene with Shanks and Uta. They lead the trailer with this, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Uta, though we're apart, you'll always be my daughter. Okay, all right. All right. Let's just calm down for a moment, everybody. Shanks is a dad. By the way, congratulations to Shanks. Has anybody just said congratulations to Shanks? We did not know he was a dad, which then again, you really can't blame anybody for that because people have been acting like this has been a big revelation, and it is. But at the same time, you got to remember, Shanks never shows up in this story. You could tell me Shanks has a wife and four children and a house in the South Blue, and that could be all completely feasible because he never shows up in the story. This would be one thing if, like, one of the Straw Hats came out of nowhere, like, like Jean Bay, a character that we've known about since Impel Down, and, you know, and then Marine Ford, and then Totland, and, you know, finally joins the Straw Hats and everything like that. This would be like in the next chapter, Jean Bay is like, like, by the way, Luffy, I have a son. Uh, his name is, uh, is, G uh, Gene Bay. Yeah, like Gene Bay and Gene Bay. Yeah, there you go. I have a son, you know? And everyone's like, what? You have a son? Like, that would be a huge, that would be a big deal if, it, if that was revealed. Or if, like, Brooke had a child or something like that, right? But Shanks, it's a big deal because we know a lot about Shanks, meaning that he's been in One Piece since the very first chapter, but we also know so little about him because he barely shows up, which is actually kind of genius that you're going to reveal that, by the way, he has a child, he has a daughter named Uta, and she is going to be the main character of this new One Piece film, like... There's so many gaps in uh, Shanks' backstory and his history. Sure, he's a parent. Why not? It actually fits perfectly fine, right? Okay. Um, a couple of things. First and foremost, people are going to be wondering, is this going to be canon? You know, is Uta going to be a canon character? Does Shanks canonically have a daughter now because of this movie? 
you want to say right out of the gate, no, right? You want to say that's that's it's a movie. They'll do any kind of crazy plot just to get you into the seats and buy the tickets. And that's why they lead with the trailer. The trailer literally opens with Shanks being like, yes, Uta. I'll always be with you, because you are my daughter, after all. And everybody's like, WHAT?! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that it might just be a gimmick to get everybody in the theater, like, we gotta see what's going on with this, right, okay? Because, like, also, that creates a lot of mystery involving Shanks, and Oda even said that in his Jump Fest message, like, Shanks is a character that has a lot of mysteries about him. Yeah, no duh! You know, in that video I made two days ago, I made a joke that Shanks only shows up in, like, two or three percent of the story. It's actually not even that much, because if you break this down, that means One Piece is over a thousand chapters, okay? So if you just want to round down to 1,000 chapters even, that means one chapter for every... Wait, no. One percent is ten chapters, okay? I don't even think... Shanks has showed up that many times, you know what I mean? Or if he has, it's always been in like a few panels or whatever, and that's it, right? Okay, he does not show up often, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and say, though, honestly... I think this this instance of Shanks having a daughter, that's going to be canon. And it's going to be canon in the same way that Shiki is canon, all right? Shiki was introduced during, well, I guess he was introduced or mentioned a little bit prior in the manga, but he first he made his first big appearance in Strong World, okay? Shiki is a canon character, but the events of Strong World are non-canon, okay? So the Straw Hats never met Shiki, they never had the adventure at Murville, you know, uh, Shiki's plan of, like, taking over the world and all that stuff, that's not canon. But Shiki is a real character, uh, he was on the Rocks crew, he does have the float float fruit, he did fight uh, Garp and Sengoku back in the day, he did fight Roger back in the day, all that stuff happened, just the plot of film, of, of, of Strong World did not occur, okay? This is probably going to be the same kind of shit, I think. I think it's going to be this whole plot of the movie, of the Straw Hats going to this festival, meeting Uta, having some adventure with her. That's not going to be canon. But the fact that Shanks is a dad, that's going to be canon. And the reason I think it is, is because... I feel like Oda, because remember, Oda was part of this writing process here. I don't think that they could just give Shanks a, a very prominent character in One Piece. You know, oh, by the way, yeah, we want to give uh, Shanks a daughter in this movie, you know, just to expand his character a little bit. Like, I don't think they would have done that without consulting Oda, and I feel like Oda would have to be the one to, like, okay... That's fine, but I have to be the one to write this. Or maybe Oda was the one that came up with the idea and be like, yeah, maybe we can explore this. Keep in mind also, in over a thousand chapters of One Piece, we don't know a lot about Shanks. So I really don't think, I mean, we'll find more stuff about Shanks in the final saga of One Piece. Shanks will have a more prominent role, of course. Uh, there might even be an interaction between Shanks and Blackbeard, and we'll get to see like Ben Beckman and uh, Yasop, of course, Usopp's dad. We'll get to see Lucky Roo and everybody in action. And then the scene, of course, where Shanks meets Luffy again, and Yasop meets Usopp again. Yeah, we're going to get that later in the story, but at the end of the day, we're probably not going to explore every little aspect of Shanks' backstory. That kind of stuff would actually honestly fit in a movie kind of format, or like a prequel manga or something like that, just called Shanks or something, right? You could do something like that. But I just, I think this is perfect to have this set up in a movie, right? And I feel like... I feel like if they went ahead and they just made Uta a non-canon movie-only character, then and then after this, you know, Shanks never has a daughter in the manga, it's never referenced, it's just like Shanks is just Shanks, okay? If they did that, I don't know, I feel like that would be weird. I would feel like that would be, okay, so you just did this for a cash grab, pretty much. You just did this so you could be like, oh, guess what? You know Shanks? Yeah, Shanks. He's the mysterious captain of the Red Hair Pirates. He inspired Luffy to become a pirate. We don't even know much about him. Yeah, but did you know he's actually a father? Ooh, and then in this movie, we're going to meet his daughter, Uta. Ooh, okay, well, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, give me the ticket. Let me go into the movie theater. And it's like, oh, by the way, yeah, she doesn't really exist in the manga. <laughs> we just made that up for a freaking movie. Yeah, just, just forget about it, right? No, I, I think the idea of Uta existing in the One Piece world will, you know, still happen. 
Oda might change it around a little bit to make it fit into the story. Same thing he had to do with Shiki to make Shiki kind of fit in the story a little bit. Like, for example, Shiki was the main character of Strong World. Like, he was the main villain. And yet, I don't think the Rocks Pirates or Rocks at all was even mentioned in that movie. So, you know, Oda used the character that the movie was, um, you know, and focused on the character without revealing a lot about the actual character. Or Oda added that stuff in later. So... In this movie, Uta is revealed to be the world's greatest diva, all right? However, she's a diva, like she sells her CDs or her tone dials, her TDs, all over the world. She's really big in One Piece Spotify and everything like that, right? Um, except nobody really knows who she is, though. Nobody's ever really met her. She's never really done, like, an in-person, like, concert performance kind of situation, okay? And so the movie takes place during this music festival where Uta is making her first live appearance and doing a concert, and the Straw Hats are going to that, and we already kind of knew about that, like the premise of it taking place on a music festival at some random island. I assumed it might have been an island that Shanks controlled. That is not the case, okay? But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Back up a bit. Shanks has a daughter! Okay, so here's the thing. Um, we see this flashback right here in the trailer. We see Shanks still wearing his straw hat, and we see Uta as a child here, okay? Um, now, Shanks was 27 years old when he gave the hat to Luffy at Fusha Village and they, you know, he lost an arm. Shanks has two arms here. Well, actually we don't because you just see the back of his cloak, but he still has the straw hat. He still has both arms, okay? Um, it was mentioned that he had been living at Fusha or Fusha was sort of like the red-haired pirate's like main base for uh, a year before this. Uh, it was mentioned. Now that doesn't mean they spent a year at Fusha. It meant that like Fusha was their home base and then they would go traveling around the east and uh, go back to Fusha to, like, resupply and stock up on booze at Makino's bar and stuff, okay? Now, um, after they left Fusha, though, they made a point to mention they're heading to the Grand Line. So I like to think for that one year while Shanks was docked at Fusha, they just traveled around the East Blue, maybe recruiting other, you know, pirates for, you know, the Red Hair crew and everything like that. They didn't go to the Grand Line until after they left Fusha. After Shanks lost an arm, after he gave the straw hat to Luffy, that is when Shanks left to go to the Grand Line. So I like to think that Uta is about the same age as Luffy, about 19 years old, okay? Um, I think that would work for the parallels right then and there, just from that alone, but also the idea that, like, okay, let's say Shanks in this flashback is uh, 26 years old. Uh, that would also put Luffy about six years old, so that would mean maybe Uta was born when Shanks was 20. I think that fits. I think that fits, and then that would put Uta about the same age as Luffy when they meet in the film and stuff, and we can have some parallels there and things like that. What about Uta's mom? Well, we sort of, kind of, maybe see her during the trailer. Um, so Shanks says, even though we're apart, you'll always be my daughter. We see a scene of Uta as a child crying, and she's, like, bawling her eyes out, I guess, because Shanks just left, probably in a similar vein to Yasop. So I would like to see that explored a little bit. I mean, it was kind of already shown with Yasop how Yasop left uh, Usopp alone with uh, his wife, who was ill, by the way. So that's kind of a dick move on Yasop's part. But I would like to see that explored, like the idea of like being a pirate, leaving your family behind. Because I don't think like... Yasop is like, yeah, I'm a pirate having the time of my life. What? My wife died and my child is all alone on that island? Eh, whatever. Doesn't matter. I love being a pirate. No, it might be actually something they look into. Like, Yasop and Shanks, in this case, might actually feel very conflicted about leaving their families and their children behind. But it's like the call of the open sea, and it's like, did I make the right decision? But there's, like, other stuff they have to do out at sea. Like, Shanks might be like, Listen, Uta, you know, I love you. You're my daughter and all that stuff. But, you know, daddy needs to go away for a little while. I need to do some really important stuff on the other side of the planet. And, you know, you could make the joke of, like, yeah, that's really important. Going out to sea to be a pirate, to, like, get drunk and, like, uh, burn villages down. But that's not how all pirates operate. Well, Shanks does get drunk, but I don't think he goes around burning villages down. Although, then again, he might, because we don't know much about the man, all right? So, um, this is also a good vehicle to explore Shanks' character 
his personality even we know a little bit about it what is his like ambition in the world what is his philosophy on life we actually get a little bit of a hint of that in the trailer all right so anyway yeah we see uta crying here i guess when shanks leaves there's somebody holding her back that could be her mom or it could be this other character that we're going to introduce here in a little bit so uh, the next scene here, by the way, the soundtrack in the background of the trailer is really good. It's like some just it, I, I, like I said, the music in this movie has to really be top notch because it literally has a musical theme. But yeah, so we have original story and general producer Eiichiro Oda. I think he was also probably, you know, involved in the writing process, at least involving the stuff involving Shanks. You know, it's like, yeah, this is the first time Shanks is showing up in a movie. I'm not saying Oda sat down and wrote the script for the whole damn thing. He doesn't have enough time for that. But I think at least when it came to, like, Shanks' dialogue and the way Shanks speaks and stuff, Oda, it's probably in his best interest to keep that consistent with what he wants to portray later on in the story, in the manga. You know what I mean? So, uh, next scene here, uh, we have Uta. We got one scene of her there. She's smiling, but then there's also a sword in the foreground, uh, the blade of a katana. Does that mean Uta is holding the blade, or does that mean that a blade is being held to her? And, you know, she's just, like, so indifferent, she doesn't even care. Like, oh, you're holding a blade to my neck? <laughs> you know, it could be something like that. Or she could be, you know, holding the sword about to attack somebody. Don't really know what the deal is with that. Um, then we have, her name is Uta, the world's greatest diva. Okay. And then we have Luffy shouting Uta. He's in gear third. He's got Gummo Gummo no, uh, you know, uh, maybe giant uh, Higant pistol or Higant rifle or something. You know, he's about to punch somebody. He's in his second ar artwork that we saw. So maybe this is during the climax of the movie. Who knows? Um, I don't think, by the way, that anything involving the most recent chapters is going to be in this movie. Um, I think it's probably just going to be stuck to, like, you know, Luffy's moveset from before. Uh, maybe he'll have a new technique in gear fourth or maybe a new form in gear fourth or something like that. Uh, we see a, sh a few shots of Uta. Uh, something to mention, uh, she had wings in the artwork, in like the original sketch artwork for the poster, and then later on we saw her wings covered up by the jacket. Uh, we actually do not see her with wings here, so the wings might very well just be an accessory. For a moment there, I was thinking, wait a second, Shanks... You know, did you go to Sky Island and then meet somebody and then... But the timelines of that doesn't really, I mean, doesn't really make a lot of sense. Because I'm assuming, you know, everything involving um, Shanks meeting the mother of Uta and then having Uta, of course, that was all well after Shanks left Roger's crew. You know, all that stuff. That was like years later. Um, you know, I, I think we also know that Shanks met Yasop, like around the time that that was actually something that was revealed in the strong world uh chapter in chapter zero i think it was about uh 22 years ago that uh shanks met yasop now that doesn't mean he maybe he did form the red hair crew right then and there but it was just the two of them just like how luffy's crew started with zoro you know what i mean um you know but then again yasop you know uh like luffy and ya uh, luffy and usopp had not even been born yet that's what i'm talking about here it, it's not like you know, Shanks met Yasop, and then Yasop left the village, and they just started the Red Hair crew. That's not how that worked, because uh, Shanks met Yasop over 20 years ago. Luffy and uh, Usopp were not even born yet, so Yasop meets Shanks, and then they pal around a little bit, and then Yasop and Banshina have Usopp, and then I guess, you know, you know, while this is going on, Shanks is still in the East, and then that's when they decide to finally leave for good. You know, they go to the Grand Line after, you know, uh, Shanks gives Luffy the hat and everything like that, right? So, yeah, like, the timelines, this could definitely work. Uh, but no, it seems like she's not a Skypean or anything, she's just using the wings for, like, um, like an on-set kind of costume kind of situation, yeah. Uh, her voice, and then there's another scene later that says, we'll change the world. Okay, so I still think, like, a voice-themed devil fruit is involved here. There's even a scene later on where she's, like, screaming, and you see, like, the sound waves, like, reverberating. Now, that, that might just be dramatic effect or something like that. Like, Shanks finally shows up at her concert, and she's like, Father! And then it, like, resonates, and it's like, oh my god, you know? Or it could be, like, an actual, legitimate, like, devil fruit ability, Okay. Uh, what's next? We see a few shots of Uta once more. Oh, here's a, a scene that goes by very fast. It's a scene with Luffy and Uta speaking on this stage, and it has, like, a bunch of crystals around them. So I guess they go to Crystal Lagoon <laughs> for the concert. That's where the concert's taking place, Crystal Lagoon. For more information, go watch One Piece D&D &D, the movie. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, we see this dude right here who looks like Frankenstein. In fact, I think his design is based off of Frankenstein's monster from the Mary Shelley novel. Well, I guess not from the Mary Shelley novel because the monster in the Mary Shelley novel looks a lot different like in the in the uh, universal horror film. So Boris Karloff, you know, Frankenstein's monster. He's got the stitches in his head. He's got the giant like diodes and like the spikes on the side of his head and stuff. He's got long hair. Uh, his name is Gregory. <laughs> Hey everybody, just a little mistake I need to correct here. So, I thought this character's name was Gregory. Uh, his actual name is Gordon. So, I know it started with the letter G, but uh, yeah, sorry about that. Not really much to say there. His name's not Gregory, it's Gordon. I say it a bunch, so there you go. And the only thing we know about Gregory, aside from the fact he looks like Frankenstein's monster, and he has some awesome shades, is that he knows a lot about the relationship between Uta and Shanks. Okay, and that earlier scene when Uta was crying and somebody was holding her back, that might have been Gregory rather than Uta's mother. Maybe Uta's mother is dead, we just don't know. Uh, but Gregory, the initial vibe I'm getting off of him is that he was like the butler of the family. I don't know how this would work. Like, Shanks would have, like, like, we don't know anything about him. That's the thing that, that really bothers me. We know he came from the West Blue. Maybe Shanks' family is super rich. Maybe he's, like, a noble. Maybe not, like, a noble, like, Tenryu Bito kind of noble, but, like, part of a royal family. And maybe he left because he didn't want to be part of that family anymore. And then he was, like, nine years old and he left home. And then Roger found him. And then that's how he joined the Roger Pirates. You know, because he was an orphan, basically. Because he's like, I don't want to be part of this family anymore. And he ran away. And then maybe he left Uta. Maybe he basically did the kind of the same thing that uh, Gene did with Gone. Basically like, I can't take care of a kid. And then just, you know, went back home. It's like, hey, watch this kid. And then they left. <laughs> you know, that's how, that's how it worked. Although it does seem that Shanks spent some time with Uta. And it might have been a situation where it's like, um, you know, Shanks meets Uta's mother and, you know, they have Uta together. Maybe Shanks spends a little bit of time with them and then he goes to be a pirate, comes back, maybe visits her every now and then. Eventually, maybe Uta's mother dies and then Shanks is like, I'll always love you, Uta, but I have to go. And then she's crying and stuff, right? So that's kind of sad. Kind of, kind of doing a parallel of Yasop's story there, but maybe. Maybe that's why Yasop and uh, yeah, Shanks found each other and be decided to become pirates, right? Okay. Uh, we have a shot of Akainu here. This is cool. So Akainu just looks really pissed like he usually does. He breaks his cigar. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's probably mad that, like, the pirates are, like, all on this musical island, but that he can't do anything about it because, like, everybody's so obsessed with Uta, really. Like, we have a scene here coming up where we see Beppo and Law here. So Beppo and Law are going to be in the movie. Beppo is wearing this giant, like, cosplay thing of, like, Uta merch and has, like, a giant neon sign strapped to his back that says Uta on the back of it. Bartolomeo is there, so Bartolomeo is going to be in this movie. We see Kobe and Helmeppo there. So the the way that I'm the way that I'm taking this is that Uta is throwing she's this huge diva everybody knows who she is right she's throwing this once in a lifetime concert on this island everybody pirate revolutionary marine doesn't matter they all show up on this island to watch her because they're such big fans and they don't even care like the marines will see pirates but it's like we're here to to listen to uta sing we're off clock today i don't even care and even the pirates are just like oh the marines well okay after i buy the limited edition uta pop figurine oh by the way yeah i forgot to mention this almost um so i got the mail today and some one of my fans, uh, Douglas. Yeah, Douglas sent me this Shanks pop figure. I didn't even know they made Shanks pop figurines, so that was a thing. But that was perfect timing for this video. Ah, <laughs> perfect. Okay. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, they just all gather on this island together. They just do not care about like you know pirates are there, marines are there. There could even be revolutionaries there. Who knows? It's like everybody's there just for their mutual love of Uta's music. Okay, so like Bartolomeo has an Uta like tattoo or like writing on his face. He's got like an Uta armband because Bartolomeo is a huge fanboy of Luffy. It would only makes sense. He's like you know it's like you know I'm a huge fan of One Piece, but I like other anime. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of the situation with Bartolomeo. So. Maybe Maybe the scene with Aki Inu, maybe Aki Inu is just pissed because he, he didn't get to go to the concert. He's just like, Fleet Admiral, you have so much paperwork. You have to stay here. You have a meeting with the Gorosei. And he's like, damn it! 
I'm the fleet admiral of the Marines. I want to go see Uta sing. I this is a once in a lifetime concert. It's okay, sir. We'll pick up the limited edition pop pop figurines. Like you damn well better. You better get every single last piece of that merch. You know, I want all of her like here's all my CDs like he's a fan. Here's all my CDs. Get them signed by her. Every single one. You hear me? <laughs> Or I will turn G1 into a damn volcano. I'll do it. All right. So yeah, Aki Inu as the super fan. That's great. Um, but yeah, it's just a big deal like that she's there. And then she yells. We see the scene where her yelling and the wind is flying. So I'm thinking it might be something with the devil fruit power. And Luffy says, if he knows his daughter is doing this, Shanks won't keep quiet. And Luffy shouts that. And then we have a scene of Uta crying again. And then we have One Piece film reddo and then finally last scene of the trailer we have a scene with the clouds parting and the light rays going through and we just have a scene with shanks and he says listen uta there is no peace or equality in this world and that's it so uh, a couple of things there so luffy says you know if he would know that his daughter is doing this shanks won't keep quiet that's sort of implying that uta is doing maybe something a little villainous Okay, maybe something in order to get Shanks' attention, and maybe that's kind of the points, because maybe Uta has not seen her dad in, like, maybe just as long that Luffy has not seen Shanks, like, about 10 years or so. Uh, over 10 years, actually. It's been 12 years since Luffy has seen Shanks. So maybe it's some situation like that, like Uta, you know, felt abandoned by Shanks, and maybe her mother died, and so then maybe she left home, traveled the world, maybe with Gregory, and, you know, just, you know, started up the being a diva, and singing and everything in hopes of like I don't know getting Shanks's attention you know like Shanks is a fan of pop music I'll become the greatest pop star ever and then Shanks will finally come to one of my concerts maybe that's the plan maybe that's the plan like she did this like so nobody knew what she looked like I'm assuming or maybe they did maybe they did like she had like al album artwork or something I don't know but if she didn't uh, release her image like so nobody knew what Uta looked like just the music and it's like oh my god this artist is incredible and then she's like I'm throwing a concert and then everybody in the world pirates marines everybody's going to be there and maybe the Yonko are going to make an appearance maybe Kaido is like ah oh, yes my plan for turning all of Wano into a pirate paradise is nearing completion how's my schedule Bao Huang ah uh, yes sir well um you know Uta's concert is on Friday what Uta's having a concert everybody hop on my dragon body we're going <laughs> King, Queen, Jack, come on, Toby Robo. Kaido turns into a giant dragon. Everybody hops on. It's like, all right, we're gonna go see Uta. You know, Kaido has like an Uta headband on. He has like like little fan thing, like Uta, Uta, <laughs> and they fly away. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please, God, Oda, make that happen, please. Oh, but holy crap. Okay. So maybe, maybe Uta is going to attempt to do something like she's not a villain, like she's not a bad person, but she's going to drastic lengths to get Shanks's attention so she can be reunited with her father. Okay, so that might that might be a bit more appropriate there. And then Luffy, of course, meets her, gets to talk to her about Shanks, and maybe she changes her way. I feel like there's got to be other conflict in the movie, though, so there might be some other villains in the background. Maybe Gregory turns out to be the main villain. Maybe it's like Gregory's the assistant, and we think Uta's the main villain, and gets her to be like, hey, I know you want to see your dad, but this isn't the right way to go about it. And Uta's like, okay, yeah, you're right, Luffy. And then, boom, Gregory reveals he was the main villain the whole time, and he turns into a giant Frankenstein monster, and then that's the final battle of the movie. Maybe something like that, because there has to be a final battle. And then maybe Shanks shows up and is reunited with his daughter, but maybe that moment would be non-canon in, in terms of the story, right? Uh, then we also have the last scene here, which is uh, Shanks saying to Uta, there is no peace or equality in this world. See, it's, it's lines like this... Like, that involves Shanks's like, personality and his, like, philosophy on how he views the world. And I don't think they would just throw that in there without consulting Oda first. Like, Oda had to write that. It's Shanks's dialogue, okay? It's like Shanks would, I mean, Oda would make damn sure, like, Shanks stays in character. He wouldn't just be like, yeah, just write Shanks however you want. Have him say whatever. Have him do whatever. I don't care if it's out of character. It's just a movie. Pfft. 
I think Oda would care at least a little bit about how Shanks was handled, right? Okay. So that line right there, there is no peace or equality in this world. That's okay. So uh, where would exactly you put that on the alignment chart? Uh, neutral somewhere, I guess. I don't know. There's also that, you know what? This has been discussed so much. The idea that Shanks might turn out to be evil. Like, so many people have made videos about this. I That's why I haven't really done it, because I'm just like, oh man, so many people have talked about this. This is such a popular theory. Like, Shanks is going to turn out to be evil or something. He's going to turn out to be a villain. Uh, he, he was like, everything was planned from the beginning and everything like that. Um, I feel like I have to make that video now. I feel like even if I'm like rehashing stuff that has already been brought up before, I, I gotta look at it from a different perspective and try to come up with something because like I feel like I have to talk about that now. But anyway, yeah. So he's like, there's no peace or equality in this world. It might be like the, the only justice is the justice we make or something like my brand of justice kind of situation. Maybe that what what's Shanks is alluding to. Or maybe he's just telling Uta, like, listen, Uta, the world is not fair. The universe is not fair. The universe does not care about, like, our lives or whatever. If we want happiness for our lives, we have to, you know, take it for ourselves. You know, we have to, if we want justice in our lives, we, are ha we have to be the ones to do that. We can't sit back and wait for the universe to just magically become peaceful and happy. We have to be the ones to change it. So, you could look at that from a more sinister angle, or you could look at that from a much more, like, optimistic kind of angle. Shanks is still kind of a deadbeat dad, though. Sort of the same thing with Yasop, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, anyway, that's the trailer. August 6th. Um, I don't know if we're going to get any more information involving this. Oh, one other thing involving Uta. Her left eye is obscured by her hair, and we do not see her left eye. So sh something might be up with that. It might be injured. She might have the Sharingan. I don't really know. We see her crying out of her left eye, and that's even when we see her as a child, her left eye is still obscured. So it might be so it might be the same thing with, like, Sanji, where it's not really a big deal. It's just how he parts his hair. Uh, as for Uta's hair, uh, half of it is red and half of it is white. Shanks, of course, has red hair, so I'm assuming that um, his wife, well, not necessarily his wife, but Uta's mom, has uh, the white hair and then Shanks has red hair and then that's what happens in anime of course it's like half and half right just like NG and Ray from My Hero Academia and that's how you get a Shoto Todoroki oh my god now that I said that <laughs> there's gonna be so much fan fiction I think now between Uta and uh, Shoto Todoroki from My Hero Academia because they have the exact same hair that's there's gonna be a lot of fan art probably fan fiction involving those two characters now right uh, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I did write down goat facts, but this is already a long video, and I want to get this out, and so we'll continue goat facts next time, but I have it right here. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Signing out. Later, everyone.